There are so many antique markets and flea markets in Japan, if you know where to look. Many of them are held in the grounds of temples and shrines on a monthly basis. This one is Ryukoji Temple Market, held on the third Sunday of every month. The stall holders are regulars, and each one has their niche. <laughs> It's fun to explore the grounds whilst browsing the stalls. There's a husband and wife team that has possibly the most variety and often their pieces are very rare. I have no idea how they manage to set up this stall like this every month with such a wonderful selection of antiques. I always look forward to seeing the new items they bring and it is always a surprise. There is such an eclectic mix at the market, and not just of Japanese items, there are things from all over the world. There is a great love of British and American antiques in Japan, and they pop up everywhere. There is an antique camera specialist who knows everything about the cameras and really loves talking about the history and the use for each one. I always find something I have never seen before. This time he had a 3D camera with three lenses. There are kimono specialists, photography specialists, interior specialists, Some also sell handmade products. Obviously, I love the antique ceramic stalls. There is such a variety in age and production style, and often bargains to be found. I found a collection of mashikoyaki pots. I just made a video about the production area and I was happy to find these lovely pieces. There is one in particular that has a very select setup of very old ceramics from the Momoyama and Edo period, Japan, and also from Korea. He really sets a mood in his display and it is like walking into a museum or an art gallery. I am not necessarily here to buy, 
As you can imagine, making and selling pottery as a job, I have quite enough pottery at home. But I do like to learn and document my findings. I really just like to bask in the patina of old handmade items set against the patina of the old handmade building. I admire the details in both. I also enjoy the different styles and collections each stall holder has put together and often ask questions like where they found them or what the items are for. There are so many special tools in Japan that I would have no idea how to use. Ryukoji is such a beautiful place to be. Ryukoji is the main temple that protects and leads the others in the area. I think there are around seven or eight others, and they are all linked to this place. The details in the wood carvings are astonishing, and I find something new in them every time I visit. The trees on the site are hundreds of years old and stand tall, framing the grounds. There is a story of the founding of the temple, and I always like to think of this story when I visit. In 1271, Kamakura, which is the old capital of Japan, had been suffering from a long period of extreme drought and famine. The priests Ryokambo Ninsho of Gokurakuji and Nichiren Shonin both prayed for rain after religious disagreements and opposition. Ryokambo Ninsho's attempts failed, but Nichiren's attempts were successful. This dispute was the instigation of Ninsho's arrest after many years of letters opposing the authorities' teachings and running of the capital. Ninsho was taken to be executed where Ryukoji stands today. Just as the executioner was about to proceed, a ball of light flashed low above the execution grounds and they stopped fearing this ominous sign. Ninsho was saved and exiled to Sado Island. In 1337, Nippo founded the temple on the execution site, and in 1601, the Grand Hall was built. Ryukoji today is an important part of the local community and is an amazing place to visit to experience a bit of Japanese culture and history.